We've been uh, getting words, seeing some, some stuff on social media and so fortunate to have you on air to give uh, some explanation with respect to it. Uh, all part of efforts to increase uh, security at the quarantine facility in Rodney Bay. Uh, can you just speak to those developments uh, at that uh, facility? Um, yes, as the public is aware, I think from February, March, we our first quarantine site was actually the Rodney Bay Public Health Facility where persons with persons coming in, especially persons from high-risk areas, someone who may or may not have been in contact with um, COVID-positive patients are, are held. Um, and it is a situation that we have been monitoring. So the security team at the Rodney Bay Public Health Facility, um, that is the quarantine site, um, they continuously notified us of breaches in security at this location due to the open beach um, access. I think earlier on you may have heard reports of um, persons coming, trying to come through the beach to visit persons who were there, and this has led to us increasing the number of people in quarantine because we, will, we have had to quarantine persons who come, try to sneak in when we do find out. So in an effort to preserve health and safety of the general public and to reduce any possible direct contact between persons in quarantine and the general public, the request was made to strengthen the security measures at that location. I must also add that um, previously a number of other measures were put in place, including increasing the, the security personnel um, manning that area and also the use of cameras. Um, these measures have not been as successful as we would like, and as you would imagine, once we know that there was some level of, of, of direct contact, we now had to take those persons in and increase the, the tracing. So this has been a bit of an issue for us, and um, the Ministry of Health, we committed to um, ensuring the health and safety of everyone, and I think it's important that the public stay focused on what we're trying to do, we're trying to reduce transmission, we're trying to contain and keep a disease um, in low levels. So as we move forward, it is one of the things that we, we really wanted to, to ensure that we can to reduce persons coming into the facilities through the beach and also to reduce up the possibility of our quarantine persons leaving. Because as you, I don't know if you're aware of how this hotel is structured, a lot of the rooms are directly with very close proximity to the beach. So we're trying to, to reduce this possibility as much as possible. Okay, thank you very much for that update. Uh, if you could just issue an appeal, more specifically to the general public at this time, uh, for just calm heads to prevail as the government of St. Lucia and by extension the Ministry of Education, uh, Ministry of Health and Wellness, sorry, seeks to uh, keep the population safe at this time, especially those in quarantine. Yes, I think it is really important. Um, I have to applaud the general public that they've worked um, in collaboration with the Ministry of Health very well um, so far, and I think a, a big part of where we are is from the, the support of the general public. Um, I also want us, we need to keep focus as to what we are trying to do. We are trying to keep the public safe from COVID-19. We've seen the, the international news and we've seen the effect um, that um, breaches such as that can, can cause on the, on the public. So I'm, I'm asking the public to be patient with us for some of the measures may not be as convenient. A lot of our protocols are not as convenient. But as the WHO, um, actually the PAHO director indicated just a few days ago, um, her assessment was very close to what we have been saying that um, COVID-19 is here for a while and it brings certain inconveniences to at every single level. Um, life is not going to be the same. So. We need to look at it. We also need to balance it. There are some things, certain luxuries that we may not um, um, have, but we need to keep the focus, preserving lives, keeping our populations healthy. So um, I would really like the public to continue working with us. Some of the measures may not be very convenient, but um, health and safety, the Ministry of Health, we committed to, to working to ensure and to strengthen that. Okay, uh, I don't mean to, to, to zone in too much on one particular uh, security measure that has been taken, but just to go back to the erecting of the fencing going into the water, there was a query as to why uh, the fencing was not done around the hotel perimeter instead of going straight into the water. Can you give an explanation to that perhaps? 
Um, this was left to the security team as to how it was done. I know there were a number of um, options were, were looked at. I know it was a difficulty, and I know a costing was done to try to see how they could have done the entire front, and I think it would have caused some extra delays. So I'm not, um, I'm not experienced in security and, and engineering, so um, this was left to the technical persons as to how um, the, the strengthening was done. But I think we need to focus on what we're trying to do. We're trying to, to keep our people safe, we're trying to reduce the, the, the spread of a, a disease that is um, infectious. Um, and I leave it to the experts to, to determine how this is done. Okay. Uh, just a, a, another question on, in terms of the quarantining. If you could just give us an update. Well, we've been receiving updates in general from you with, re with respect to the quarantine facility, but also home quarantining. We've been getting a lot of queries as to how that can be done. Can you give us a status update on how uh, the, the extent of permission that has been given so far? Yes. Um, as, as we go into the month of July, we c for the last few months, our priority has been institutional quarantine as, as it is easier for us to monitor and manage persons there. Um, however, for our quarantine protocol, we have certain exceptions that we have had to make. Um, for example, there are certain persons there, their health condition would not allow them to stay alone in a room where they need a level of direct monitoring by a caregiver. So those are th that is one of the cases. We've had persons with different levels of disabilities. Um, we have had cases of persons with certain mental health issues. We also had um, cases where a sudden death of a close family member and they can't stay alone because of their, their condition. So there are a number of um, exceptions that we have had to, to make. I don't have the exact number here, but our protocol clearly indicates um, who we grant home quarantine. And in all of those measures, they must have conditions to facilitate it safely. That is a room and a bathroom that's completely away from the rest of the house. So um, we remain our gold standard for quarantine is institutional quarantine, which we, 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 keep, till, we keep during the month of July. Um, persons with special conditions, they usually um, email with their request. Um, some people send in their, their physician's note or they send um, an email indicating the, the consideration and a special form is sent to them to fill out where um, we decide whether or not um, it's, it's granted. But um, our, our gold standard for quarantine remains institutional quarantine, um, except in conditions where um, for humanitarian and other reasons where we facilitate it um, out of the out of the, the institutional quarantine okay. so we will continue although in July we anticipate we continue repatriating our nationals from, from various um, areas so we are hoping that we can can continue and manage it as, as started Okay. There are quite a few email addresses and contact numbers uh, coming from the Ministry of Health. Uh, can you give an email address or perhaps a contact number that uh, individuals who are interested in applying for home quarantining can, con can, can call or email? Yes. The email address is cmohealth at gosl.gov.lc. Okay. Okay, thank you very much for that update. Any more uh, updates or information that are pertinent to the public at this time? Um, yes, we will be updating because we've received some more negative results. So our, our total testing numbers will, will go up. I didn't walk in the exact numbers right now. So we will be given, giving um, that, that update as well. Um, at this point, um, practically um, everywhere is open. I think the only exceptions are cinemas and big mass crowd activities. I think all other activities to this point. So I just want to appeal to the public um, that although we do not have any active COVID-19 cases in country, as we've opened up, as um, we will be opening up the borders, our risks of transmission will be increasing. So it is important that we maintain um, the protocols for accessing um, stores and, and other areas. Um, this will allow that if we have any positive cases coming in, if we adhere to the various physical distancing, use of your mask, the regular hand washing, 
even though a case were to come in, um, the transmission would be very low. So this is our main reason for keeping the, the protocols. And like I indicated, Dr. Etienne through Paho made it clear that um, it looks like we'll be in this situation for another two years. So it's something that we need to, to get used to. We need to um, keep our guard up um, if we are to, to keep our, our levels low. Okay. I uh, thank you very much for that update, Dr. Sharon Bilmar George. Uh, commendations to you as well as the Operations Command Center for a job well done in looking out for the health and wellness of the population. Thank you very much.